Hello there and welcome to Revis Consult Tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how to create a parametric Revit family in the family editor from scratch. So um, to give you a very short explanation, a parametric family has parameters that are used to control the shapes such as the width, length, depth and so on. The elements are geometric shapes that are created with the help of reference planes, constraints, and parameters. I'll explain and show you exactly what they're used for in this video. And to give you a clear understanding of how this works, we will create a glass table because then you will learn from scratch how to create an element and then cut out an area which you can use on various occasions. So this is the very, very basics. So let's dive into it. First of all, we need to go to file and click on new family. Here we can select the various family templates. I will not go through all these now. And in this case, we want to select the generic model family template. It will open four views and the currently open view is the reference level. So we're looking at the family from above. The cross here is made of two reference planes and you can see they're pinned. So they can't move anywhere and they are the center lines we are referring to when we create the family. The first thing we're going to do is to plan and lay out the necessary reference planes for the family type RP on your keyboard to add reference planes and add four of them. You can name them if you want. It's a really good idea to do that if you are creating a complex family. Now we're going to use the dimension tool to add equal constraints, which will make the two reference planes have equal distances from one another. We're creating them because we want to add parameters to our family's dimensions so we can be able to change the values in the properties menu while we are adding them to the project. Type DI on your keyboard and click on the three reference planes and then hit the small EQ symbol in the middle when you're done. Do the same thing for the two other reference planes, which will create the depth of the table. Now add dimensions between the reference planes. Select one of the dimensions and go to the label section up here. Give it a name. This will be the width of the table. And now you can choose what type of parameter you want to create. If you create a type, then you will affect the width of the table type in the project. So if you create an instance, then you will be able to change the width parameter in this case of each individual table of this type in the project. We're going to select type for this example. If you click on edit tooltip, then you can add a note to the family so the other team members on the project can see how to use the parameter properly. Now you can see that it labeled the dimension. Do the same thing for the depth. If we click and drag one of the reference planes, you see the other will follow because of the equal constraints we created before. Go to family types and here you will see the parameters that we created. The dimensions here are default in the family. So that means that we can change them. So every time we load the family in the projects, the dimensions here will be default. Let's change them. Hit apply and click OK. Now that we have the width and depth in place, we also want to have the height of the table. So go to the front view and add a reference plane. I'm going to call it table surface because I need to locate this reference plane in a minute. Add a dimension from the floor level to it, then add a height parameter to it.
Now, let's create the tabletop by going to the Create tab and click on Extrusion. Click on Rectangle and set the work plane to the table surface. Click OK. I'm going to set the extrusion to minus 50 millimeters because we're adding an extrusion from the table surface. We can also call it a box. Remember to always lock these constraints. Click Finish. And go to the front view and you can now see that we created the tabletop from the reference plane, table surface, and minus 50 millimeters down. Now, let's go ahead and add the table legs. It's exactly the same exercise as before. Add reference planes on the inside of the table. Add dimensions to them. Select them all and add a parameter to them. I'll name them leg in this case and they will have the same dimension. Now we're going to add the table legs by creating extrusions to the reference planes that we just created. And always lock the constraints. Go to the front view, click and drag the bottom of the table leg to the floor. And do the same thing with the top of it and drag it to the bottom of the tabletop and lock the constraints. I'm going to change the height of the table. It's a bit too much now. Go to the 3D view. It looks good, but I want to remove the joining of the tabletop and the leg so it looks more clean in a way. Go to Join Geometry and click on the two elements. And there you have it. Let's create a tabletop made of a glass but first, we're going to create a hole for it. Go to Create, hover over the Void Forms and click on Void Extrusion. Click on Rectangle and add it where you want. Remember to lock the constraints. Click on Finish. Go to Front View to adjust the Void Extrusion and lock it to where you want the hole to be. Now that we have a hole in the tabletop, we can add the glass by creating an extrusion. Click Finish. You can now see that we need to adjust it and set it into place. Go to the front view again and add a reference plane so we can add a parameter to adjust the thickness of the glass. Add a dimension 
and create a type parameter. Align the bottom of the glass to the reference plane and lock it. Select the extrusion that is supposed to be the glass and add a glass material to it by going to Material in the Properties menu. Select Glass and click OK. I'm going to set it to shaded down here so it will give us a more realistic view of it right now. Congrats, you just created a family in the family editor. You can now create multiple family types of the table if you need it. Go to family types, name the family type you just created. And then add a new one. and change the default values. And now you can toggle between the types you created. And as you can see, the parametric family is really, really flexible and you can create whatever you want in your projects. And the flexibility makes you able to be very creative with this as well. So just remember to always lock your constraints. And as this, yeah, it can really mess up your work and can be really frustrating. So, yeah, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And um, from here, I want you to consider to subscribe to my channel and like this video as well. Thank you for watching.